What's up everyone? Let's just jump right into this video. So as you can see, my right hand is finished and we're gonna go ahead and do my left hand. This is one of my favorite nail polish colors. So I already shaped, trimmed all of that off camera. What we're gonna do next is put plastic covers on to protect my skin. You do not want any of the nail polish on your skin. It's just a headache to get off. The first step is to actually prep your nails. What this does is it gets all of that oil off of your nails that you naturally produce. So the next step for me is to add on the primer. And what the primer does is it creates a tacky layer for the nail polish to adhere to. It makes it a lot better if you're someone who realizes that your nail polish has to peel. Some of it does have to do with the fact that you may not be using a primer. The last step in the beginning process for me is to add a little bit of builder gel. This is to help me out a lot because your hair can break down gel polish in an instant. And for some reason, builder gel is the only thing that has helped me maintain and keep my nails painted and thick and everything that I like in a gel manicure a lot longer. It is something that is a lot easier to work with when it's in this form because it's like nail polish, whereas some builder gels come in a pot and I do have that type of builder gel. But this came in this set that I'm working with, the Kiara Sky Jelly Tips, and I do have the tips on my nails right now. However, I cut them so they look like just the nail tips that you're used to seeing at the nail salon. They're not on my entire nail. I'm going to go ahead and cure this for 30 seconds and then once that is finished I'm going to take off the tacky top layer that Builder Gel leaves with the rubbing alcohol and take off those plastic parts. Now I'm going to have to file down a little bit, not a lot. Again, I am not a licensed professional. I just enjoy doing my own nails to make it a lot more even. Creating this even surface is going to help out with gel polish application later on and what you're also going to see me do is take the sanding band and create a filed layer. And just so you guys know, I'm not applying a lot of pressure to my nails when I'm doing this. I'm doing all of this very light and this is sped up so I'm taking my time when I'm making sure that I'm not touching my skin and I'm making sure that the entire nail has some type of filing over top of it. The reason why people will make sure they file or sand their nails in this manner is so that the nail polish you're going to put over top has something to adhere to. If I didn't add builder gel, I would have gone ahead and started applying the nail polish since I already did the prep and prime step. But because I added builder gel, this is another couple of steps that I have to do to make sure my nail polish is going to stick. Alright, so let's transition from the prep steps to the actual science behind everything you're seeing. I'm here to tell you that yes, gel nail polish does fall under the acrylic family. It's because of some of the chemicals that make up the gel nail polish itself. Within your gel nail polish, there's a specific chemical that's considered a photo initiator. And in your UV or LED lamp, the light will make the photo initiator start to work and start to harden. It reacts with the wavelengths emitted from the lamp. Let me give you guys an idea of how much narrower an LED light is compared to the UV light. So UV gel needs about 50 nanometers to cure. However, a UV bulb can emit a range of 300 to 400 nanometers. Whereas the LED gel nail polish needs about 375 nanometers to cure. The LED bulbs emit a range of 370 to 380 nanometers. 
This is the reason why it takes a shorter amount of time for gel under an LED lamp to cure. Under a UV lamp, it takes significantly longer. Regardless of the type of lamp you use, make sure you read the instructions on the bottle of the nail polish itself. It will tell you how long you need to cure your polish for based on the type of lamp that you have. Not all polishes are made equal, so make sure you check the instructions. But what you guys didn't see me do prior to beginning this entire process was apply sunscreen to my hands because yes, it is still emitting UV rays. While you're applying your nail polish, you need to make sure that you are putting it in thin, even layers. Now, this goes for regular nail polish as well, just because the drying time will be affected. However, for gel nail polish, this is a little different. The light itself can't penetrate too deeply into any surface. You must make sure that you're applying thin, evenly distributed layers so the light can do the exact same thing that you did and your nails will cure 100% in between each layer. Even if it's a layer of color polish, there will be a tacky layer on the topmost layer of your polish. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but all the tacky layer is, even if it's the very top layer after the top coat, it's just some uncured gel. That's from the oxygen exposure. Oxygen stops the top layer from curing. Not completely, since you're not going to wipe away that all of that polish that you've spent time putting on, it's just that, for some reason, not all of it cured. Whereas, the bottom layers aren't going to be super exposed to oxygen. See, as you keep curing and putting on thin layers of polish, though it can't penetrate surfaces deeply, it still can penetrate a surface. So you're still curing previous layers that you've put on. I know it sounds confusing, but think about it like this. The more you highlight over a section in a book or an article, the darker it becomes. And that's exactly what's happening when you put on gel nail polish or regular nail polish. The difference is the top layer sometimes is wet. Think about that as the gel polish layer, the uncured layer. It honestly doesn't matter that in between the layers of color polish, you're going to have tacky layers. But where it does count is when you are at the final step and you've just cured that top coat, that clear top coat. You cannot have uncured polish just sitting on your nails. You want to make sure you take some rubbing alcohol to wipe that uncured polish off. This will save you a lot of time and money just by grabbing a simple household staple. There are products on the market, however, that have that specific purpose of removing that top layer. You can also use acetone, but just know acetone also eats gel nail polish in the end if it's left on for too long. So now we're back at the tutorial part. Here I'm just placing a metal strip, a metallic strip, onto the tip of my nail. And I'm going to use my cuticle cutter to cut them off. And that is my other cuticle tool that I'm going to use to help push it down. There will be some, a little bit of hangover, but it doesn't matter. Um, after I do this on all five of those nails, I'm going to go ahead and put another layer of top coat on. So I did this after the top coat step, so the tacky layer that I was talking about earlier can help that strip adhere to it. And this last layer of gel top coat polish is going to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. It just encapsulates the nail. Since there is some hangover, once the curing process is done, I'm going to go back in with my cuticle nipper and a small file to make sure that those ends don't lift or anything like that. This is the final look with my nails full of cuticle oil to nourish those cuticles. They've gone through some trauma, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope that you understand the science behind gel manicures. 
be on the lookout for more videos like this in the future and i'll see you guys next time bye